Welcome gentlemen. This uh, video is a response to War Drums Fire who pretty much uh, put a response out to my video uh, that I put out a few weeks ago um, called No Doors for Men. Just wanted to give you a bit of a background uh, on War Drums Fire. Now, War Drums Fire is a very good friend of mine. Um, I would put him as a brother due to the fact that he's actually been closer to me as a friend, as a brother, has actually helped me, given me advice for over three years. So I had still been in the relationship with the mother of my children, um, which who is my ex now, and leading up towards the final bits, final stages where I was getting excessively abused and what have you, War Drums Fire was giving me a lot of advice. He helped me keep uh, my mind together. Pretty, pretty much, um, he's one of the guys that gave me the type of advice that kept me here, kept me alive. So he's very, War Drums Fire, you're, you, you're my brother, bro. Um, so straight out, man. Um, I know we haven't spoken much. It's been a while. We all go our own separate routes every now and then. We are men going their own way. Um, th this is evidence on an individual level. But on a, on a collective level, we sort of generally end up coming back. And, um, yeah, so guys, I, I thought I'd pretty much give you guys a bit of a background on War Drums Fire. He's produced a lot of content over the last few years. Um, initially, some of his content was about narcissistic personality disorders. It helped me a lot into uh, understanding uh, the reason why my ex was behaving she was, the controlling behavior, the manipulative, um, grandiose behavior. So um, the, the, the video that War Drums Fire is labeled MGTOW to my brother Universal Studios 13 and this is uh, what War Drums Fire has to say. War Drums Fire, look, th this is what I'm going to do just to make it easy for myself, man, because of the editing stuff. I'm going to pretty much play your video and I'll just respond to it. It makes it, I think, easier and um, more, more, more efficient, I suppose. A reply to Universal Studios video, Make to Australia, No Doors for Men, posted in April 2015. You know, brother, no matter how much evidence you bring to the table, you will always be fighting an uphill battle. We know you're correct. We know she's insane. We have all the love for you and want you to have your kids back. I, I know that, bro, and I really appreciate that. Um, there's a lot of men out there, especially the new MGTOW men, uh, that are just body on the red pill now. And... It is very important for them to realize that it is an uphill battle. For me, it's becoming easier. A lot of men suggested that it will actually become harder, but to be totally honest with you, because of the support that I get from men, men going their own way, so some of the ideas, philosophies of men going their own way on, on a basic and fundamental level, they actually help one become resilient. But I just want to show other men out there, look how tough it is. Even if you have all the evidence in the world, look how they will make life hell and miserable for you. During your video, you made a couple of statements, and I'm not sure how much you've actually understood your own statements. You've once said that she's absolutely crazy, and that you know how badly crazy she is. And this is why she is scared of you. It's the same thing I had with Kim. Our uh, situations are very similar, and uh, a lot of stuff, uh, I remember very parallel things occurred, uh, situations that you could put together and say, wow, you know, um, but the thing is, it's not about, it's not about her being crazy, 
It's about us guys living in a world that is crazy. It's not only about uh, females, it's also about legislation and governments themselves. And it's time we as men look at ourselves and pretty much well, not only walk away and say goodbye to the rest of the world, we can do that if you, if you want to do that, you can do that if it, if it suits any man, we'll fine. But um, it's pretty much just to show guys out there. So I do my best just to articulate as best as I can to show men, look how it is, look how tough it's going to be. She was terrified of me because I knew all of her weaknesses. I knew everything I could to pin her. So her first impulsive behavior is to make up tons of false allegations against me to protect her own ass. I think even uh, the police do that themselves. It's not only the females. Uh, they do that to, to protect themselves as well. Um, for example, um, when it comes to Australian apprehended domestic violence orders, also known as restraining orders, the police will pretty much bend over backwards to add a few things in there. For example, in my case, on the restraining order, adding the children's names to the restraining order, whereas even though the mother was charged for that matter, and I had not been charged for that matter, I have a restraining order against myself, and I'm supposed to stay away from the mother, which is perfectly fine. Don't even want to be near her anyway. Um, but my children's names... Uh, on the restraining order, mind you, at the time, my children were three and two years old. Now, the police know that the mother's being charged and that I'm the innocent party. Under Section 83 of, of the Crimes Act, the police need to take my children's names off the ADVO, the restraining order. They won't do that. So they will throw a lot of things at you. It's not. It's it's like a female that is that is crazy, batshit crazy. The, the government's pretty much reflecting that, or uh, the, the females are reflecting what government are doing, or vice versa. Rubs off on each other. They will throw you in front of the bus. That's exactly what legislation is doing. Government is throwing men under the bus, and I could almost say by any means necessary. It is why it. It is why uh, men uh, in, in Australia, that is, uh, on average in Australia, you have six men committing suicide per day and 21 fathers committing suicide per week. So, yes, even legislation throws uh, males under the bus, not only females. And it's like they're both looking into a mirror um, and you have... Females in government doing pretty much the same thing, throwing males under the bus. I don't believe a single allegation your ex has told against your mother. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, the thing, the thing is, this: most guys will drums fire. Or most guys will make a statement, and yes, a lot of guys will believe these other men. It's it's because we hurt and we feel each other's pain. But there's a lot of other guys that are going to be like, yeah, okay, you're telling me a story, but you can't back your story up. There's always two sides to a story. This is why it is great to have this type of evidence. And in my previous videos, and a lot of other guys out there know, we call this the silver shield. You know this, the silver shield. When the silver bullet comes your way, it's great to have the silver shield because that silver, that silver bullet is made up of allegations or one allegation sexual allegations now that silver bullet is an allegation the person pulling the trigger is the female but that trigger and gun that unit is actually the government itself so the government is the gun the female is pulling the trigger and the allegation is a silver bullet no i don't think any mcto man does we understand how females, once they are exposed, once we know how bad they are, will throw a man off the bus at any given time to get herself out of trouble. I know how you posted tons of evidence and have videos and have pictures of the black eye and how it all doesn't seem to matter right now, how it all seems to be worthless in the eyes of the courts. 
the black eye is just a small um, piece of evidence that I've introduced to the pool of the MGTOW sphere. I'm going to throw this out there for you guys to ponder on. I've got hundreds of recordings, and I have said that on multiple occasions, but this one here is where the mother has threatened my daughter because my daughter wouldn't go to sleep as fast as the mother wanted. So the mother threatened my daughter with an electrical power saw, pretty much that if she doesn't go to bed, she's going to cut her up. And for the record, the an an uh, is a power saw. Here it goes. It's only a 14 second recording. You know, you're going to have to deal with that for a while and put up with that shit for a while. But there will come a time where she can no longer make up a false excuse without you instantly putting her into a corner and saying, look, liar, liar, liar to the courts. The courts are the least of my worries. Um, I'm pretty much just, as I've said to a lot of other men in the MGTOW sphere, hoping for the best, expecting the worst. I know legislation is totally against me. That's why I'll never get married again, inclusive of female nature. So you put that all together and you say, you know, you'd be a donkey to want to get married. Um, <laughs> so long term, long term, with regards to my kids, I mean, I've got another account where I do speak to my kids and I will be telling my kids pretty much everything uh, that has happened. I, I won't be hiding anything from them. It'll happen. For now, she has to spin her web, and you just have to kind of keep burning the web down until she can no longer spin her web, and that's when she will get caught. As for your kids, you know, hey, prayers out there for them that they're going to be fine and you're okay through this. I still think it's very important that you tell both of your children exactly what has happened, down to the T. You know, children might not be able to process it all, but you have to let them know that, hey, daddy is not the issue. It's mommy who is sitting there teaching them what to say, coaching them what to do. Well, long story short, you're, you're totally right um, with regards to that, the, uh, the things that you said there. Um, I mean, I don't even have to tell my kids. Uh, what, what happens is I see my kids two hours every single fortnight uh, through contact visits. And believe it or not, even though I see my kids for only two hours every single fortnight, they're supervised visits. So I have someone like a, you know, someone standing there with a, a pen and a pad noting everything that's being uh, said and spoken and what activities you're, you're playing, etc. Believe it or not, my kids don't even want to leave me after the two hours. Uh, and there is a reason for that. Um, on, on one specific occasion, about one and a half, maybe two months ago, uh, when the mother came to take the kids, my daughter started crying. She didn't want to leave. She actually wanted to stay behind. So, you know, I mean, actions speak a lot louder than words. She can keep brainwashing them. However, long term, I will be showing my kids everything because they need to know they have the right. My kids, my children have the right to know. As, as much as feminists would like to tell you with all their programs and w w with these type of, I mean, there is a, there is a there's, there's probably an age where the kids are too young. Okay, I'll agree with that. But there does come a time where the kids are old enough and they have the right to know. They have, um, you have an obligation as a man to let them know exactly what happened. And if you don't do that, it's going to backfire on you because your kids are going to think, well, you left us in the cold. You left us in the dark. Why did you do, why did you do that, Dad? And this is actually another card that feminists have up their sleeves. They don't want you to explain what happened because by you not explaining the, the, the truth and uh, all the points that need to be raised, you're actually giving more power to females. So, yeah, for sure, I, ha I have to explain to my kids what really did occur. I mean, I've got recordings that I could show them as well. So that's pretty, uh, in my situation, it's pretty straightforward. They need to become aware of what the situation is so that they can also make a choice to either support their daddy or support their mommy. 
I'm very sure that mommy's got them brainwashed anyways because, hey, she's an actual born manipulator. She is a narcissist. She's a horrible, foul fucking creature. Mate, I totally agree with you. And um, unfortunately, you have a lot of females that are a lot older that, that are probably 48, 45, 50, 55 even up to the age of 60, that work in the Department of Community Services, family and community services, even have female police officers that know she is all of that. They, that know that she is psychopathic, um, extremely dangerous, extremely manipulative, and yet they still assist her. Yet they still assist her. This is how petty it's become. You're absolutely right that the courts and police stations are run by feminazis. I noticed it too. When I was accused of my accusations, they did everything possible to try to con me or set me up into a certain role. They, were, they just wanted to put me into that role of abuser. They just they, they, they try everything possible. They even come up to your face and say, okay, for example, when, when Kim said that to the police, you, okay, Kim, Kim walks into the police station, crying her ass off, <laughs> he raped me. The police didn't buy it. Just um, it, it actually it goes a bit deeper than that. In, in my, for, for me anyway, from my experience, um, the magistrate, the magistrate. As a lot of guys will tell you, be careful, don't speak about magistrates. No, 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 no. Even the female magistrate, full feminist, from from head to toe, um, pretty much local court. The mother's being charged, um, and. What needs to happen now is that so the police have charged the mother and the police want to convict the mother. But you got a female magistrate that's pretty much deaf to any type of allegation the mother is trying to make. In in the sense, for example, the mother's making a serious a serious allegation. She's in the witness box. Uh, the prosecutors asked her a question that has, that where, where, for example, he wants to know the answer to what is the color of this wall, for example, or this car. And the mother, instead of answering that question, she'll start veering off and, and, and playing sympathy card, playing the sympathy card and start talking about how he tried to rape me. He put one of his knees and... Uh, on on my leg and another knee, um, and the, and the magistrate just they don't care, they they just don't care. Mothers can do that. Uh, it's actually you can actually get convicted for lying about stuff in court. Um, you can actually get charged, but yeah, but if you're a female, that's fine. You know what I mean. And if you go to the police station, you can lie straight through your teeth. The police will actually aid them. And I've got evidence of that. The police will aid these females. How? Easy. What happened in my situation, in this circumstance, the, po the police officer that actually put the restraining order against myself, he received images from the mother's phone inclusive of that that image that, that I've used in the past with the you know the blue uh, the, the makeup the shiny eye it's not a black eye we all know that no swelling no bruising he got that Bluetooth to his phone from the mother of my children my ex they're right there collusion if there's another person there that's conspiracy so they will collude and they don't care you know what I mean so. It's pretty much normal uh, these days. And I'm not saying let's take it as, as, as it's normal. No, you know, I'm just talking like this because I'm just over them. You know, I'm, I'm moving forward. Um, and there's probably a lot more for me to go. You know, I'm not totally over, it, obviously, but I've, I've come a long way. And it's starting to appear like nothing but ants, um, cockroaches. So... I mean, that might, might be hard language, but um, <laughs> so be it, you know what I mean? I'm moving forward. I, I just don't care anymore with, with regards to how legislation works. They can't they can't touch me anymore. Despite them not buying her story, they still have tried to call me a rapist for six months. They still tried to use that false story against me for six months. And I actually at one point said, okay, you know what? If you have any balls whatsoever, Mr. Police Officer, go ahead and make that charge official. 
Go ahead. I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that, bro. Um, it's very difficult. Most most guys don't understand how difficult it is, and I'm really, really sorry to hear that. And I know that you're 100% innocent, bro. Um, you know, it's the same same strategy here. How you know when when you have an old man across the road walking with his grandson or granddaughter, that stigma. All it takes is one person to give him a crooked eye, and that old man just you, you destroy you destroy men, and it's very painful. And I know you're a very tough guy, war drums, war drums fire. You're a very very strong, very very tough guy. You're a very strong man. And um, I'm, I'm sorry that you had to go through all that, bro. You're going to call me an official rapist. That way I can sue you, sue my ex for slander, sue my ex for false allegations, and I will win. They backed off. Have you noticed how you've not actually been officially accused of child molestation? How it's just sticking around an accusation? Because that's the... Well, in my, in my situation, um, what happened was... Um, even though the investigation happens behind your back and gets closed behind your back, they don't even tell you there's an investigation. It's no longer sticking around anymore in in, in, in my world. Um, and I made sure, I suppose, um, like, for example, they apologized to, to me on the phone. The females did anyway. And I asked for an apology. They didn't really give me... They, they said they're going to give me a written apology. They, they sent me the written apology. But I said this in the, I think in the same video, or maybe the video before No Doors for Men, I can't remember exactly, where they don't tell you, they don't tell you in the letter that they're actually sorry for um, for them not ringing you, for not uh, causing you to be a part of the investigation, as in also interviewing you. They just apologize with things like, oh, we're sorry for what happened, and, and st- stuff like that, words, words to that effect. Um, and you know, you tell them that you go. We know that uh, lie detector tests. I found that after I did it, that you know they're not a hundred percent accurate. I mean, I went, I travelled to another state. Um, the lie detector test cost a thousand and fifty dollars, and when I came back, I gave that lie lie detector test to my solicitor, uh, who's a female, and um, there's a reason behind that as well, and. They're not surprised in the sense where they're not surprised that that you're innocent. <laughs> like it's 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 just normal these days. It has become a normality that females make up false rape allegations and false child sexual molestation allegations. It's sad to say it, but it's normal. That's why you can't believe any of them. You can't believe any of them. Now I'm not saying that there aren't female victims of rape. There are male victims of rape. People don't give a fuck about the male victims of rape. No one gives, no one, no one cares. There's a small handful of men that care for victims of rape that are men. Now I'm not saying because of that we don't need to care about females, but there's a, there's a big difference when you have the bulk of females, and I will say, I'll throw this out there, the bulk of females that claim that they've been raped are liars. They're liars. The bulk of them are. The bulk of mothers that say that this father sexually molested his children are liars. Total liars. And it's, it's should I say, it's also not funny that they only do this around a month, maybe two months after they have a breakup. It's very predictable. Um, and, again, and once again, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very sorry that you, you and other men have to go through this. You have a lot of uh, females that can chuck this out very easy, and it's uh, very predictable by these females. And the people that investigate it know it's a lie, but they don't feel any hardship. They don't go, th- they don't go through the stress that you go through. They don't go through the pain, that gut-wrenching... <sighs> That's why women can manipulate the courts. They don't actually have to make a, a, an actual charge because then, then it's legal, then it's binding, you know. Then you can actually counter tra- charge. But what they do is they, they drop false hints. Uh, I'm sure you're aware of that because you're actually in the same situation as I am. But I understand where you're coming from, brother. 
I know what you're going through, and you have my respect for that. And I. Bro, I just want to say once again, War Drums Fire, man, I totally love you, bro, uh, and I, I respect you from the bottom of my heart. And, you know, we used to message each other a lot. <laughs> it, was, uh, it, was, it was a bit, I used to message you on my phone, my mobile phone, man. I used to have to turn around. I used to, she used to, the monster used to be in the same bedroom as me, bro. <laughs> I used to have to turn around and, uh, Watch your videos, put my headphones on. Man, now I'm a free man, bro. I'm a free man. I'm so, I'm so fucking happy, bro. Um, I don't care what the label is. I'm, I'm proud to be a man going his own way. Um, you know, it's Mixel for now. Um, but I'm talking about what it encompasses to be a Mixel. That's what makes me proud, just a man being off the plantation. Um, simple very very simple that's it just being off the plantation and understanding female nature female nature and government legislation the steroid that boosts that female nature and um, yeah man you helped me understand you helped me understand a, a hell of a lot bro so I respect you bro understand as a brother you know you deserve so much better than this shit you deserve your kids back you deserve to have a good, happy home. Good. Well, just for the record, I mean, it's not about me uh, deserving to have my kids back. That's fine. I mean, if if, if she was normal, um, I, I'd be happy to see my kids once a week, let them have a sleepover. Well, I'd be happy with that. You know, if she was looking after the kids, look, relationships on average, they're saying, I know that it might not sound natural, but they say that relationships average seven years okay fine we were together for seven years you know we had a fallout fine raise the kids but when the mother is unhealthy it becomes it becomes different it changes the dynamics of everything the investigation um, any type of insight any, any, any type of examination needs to be forensic when it comes to children's livelihoods now, the United, Nations, the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child states that the child has the right to live with a healthy parent. Um, this is a right in all Western countries, specifically countries that implement the Family Law Act of, whether it be 1974 or 1975, here in Australia we have the Family Law Act of 1975. This is a breach. So it's not really a, a, a matter of me having the right to you know, have my kids in my life, as in them living with me, it now becomes about the kids. Now, the kids, the kids, they don't even have rights. So really, essentially, what's going on here? Do they really give a shit about the kids? No. Do they really give a shit about the, about the father? Well, obviously, no. Do they care about the mother? I mean, females might think they do. Females might think that they care about the mothers. I mean, we're talking legislation here, and government, government's not stupid. They know about hypergamy. They know about female nature, their promiscuous behavior, their hypergamous nature, ultimately. So, um, really, all it is is just a bunch of people just, you know, being abused. But, you know, in my, in my opinion, the most important people in this scenario are the kids, and this is a direct violation of children's rights in all of these countries that claim to be modern. This woman will one day spend eternity in purgatory. Don't worry about that. I'm aware you have all the evidence in the world. But I know that the courts are going to do everything to dis disprove your evidence or dismiss your evidence. Um... Right, in the, right from the outset, the solicitors will tell you that you have too much evidence. And uh, the judges, they don't like to have all this evidence in there. They don't want to waste time. So, you know, again, hope for the best, expect the worst. You know, some, some solicitors don't even know how to offer evidence to a judge when it's quite simple as, Your Honor, I would like to offer Exhibit A or what's been previously marked as Exhibit A to the court as evidence. It's very easy, but a lot of uh, solicitors don't know how to offer it to the court. 
Um, and a lot of solicitors will also tell you that judges don't like this type of evidence in there. Uh, sometimes it helps to have uh, evidence that's on paper or photos and things like that. But um, again, hope for the best, expect the worst. Don't care about men at all. They just don't care. They would rather give the children off to a psychopathic, delusional, motherfucking whore of a woman than give it to a decent father who deserves them and would educate them properly and raise them as good, decent children. Unfortunately, that's the case all around the world, um, and I, I think that's why the suicide rate here in Australia, and I'm sure it would be pretty much the same in, in 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 all the Western countries around the world. Again, specifically the countries that that that, that, that apply uh, the Family Law Act. Um, again, why the suicide rate is so high? Um, I don't know what the world is coming to by doing that. But I know that the men out there that are going to the same situation do not deserve one ounce of it. And you have my full respect for it. In my case, I had to sit there in front of an attorney general that's all del- deluded motherfucker. He must have been like 89 years old. And he's sitting there in the courtroom and he's saying to me, you know, just, oh, you have problems in the first month of your relationship. Your relationship was doomed from the first month. And I'm like, that's nowhere near accurate or true, and I can prove that, yet you have the nerve to stand there and quote my ex as if you are a motherfucking parrot. You know, it's funny that you say that, because um, when I went to the psychiatrist, as in we had a family report put together, and it ends up being put into the family court uh, as an expert report, the first dilemma that my ex and I had which was early early in our uh, relationship I think it was when the, the mother had fallen pregnant to my daughter um, that's actually when that first dilemma that first problem that's the that's where the psychiatrist pinpointed and said that's where they started uh, uh, breaking up um, yeah so it's it's weird how they look at it just because my ex says one thing does not make it legally binding and, and written in gold. Well, actually, they that, that's exactly what they try to do. Again, with regards to the psychiatrist, it's, it's strange because I, I find a lot of similarities there. Um, everything that um, a man or a female state, but usually they have more leniency towards a female, um, they take as fact. And it, if you don't fight that, it ends up becoming truth. Now, I don't mean truth as in universal truth and truth in the essence, but court truth, police truth. Other people just call them facts. So they are very cunning. They are very manipulative. Again, we have the mirror image of the female and government, uh, pretty much females mirroring government. And female is female... Females in government are both extremely manipulative. It's pretty much you look at narcissistic personality disorder, and its and its traits, the sense of grandiosity, self-adulation, uh, lack of empathy, even sadism, and some of the other smaller traits. It doesn't only apply to females; it applies to government. It applies to legislation, and a lot of people overlook that. But yet, that's how they act. They act like everything that comes out of a female's mouth is true, accurate, and down to the T, perfection. And that the man has to make up any kind of excuse to get out of the female's allegation. It's completely biased, sickening, and really gross. I had to sit there and argue like on a Jerry Springer show argue with a judge who decided to tell me that my relationship had problems in the first month. When I damn well know that it was a seventh month, and I make they will they 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 will do things like that um, to gaslight you uh, sometimes just to see your emotions off, trying to get you some sometimes they assume that you might be a a, a you know a passive aggressive or aggressive person just so that you can react in such a way, um, even though they know 
themselves that they're lying and you could be a gentleman i mean it's not like gentlemen aren't gonna also uh, argue the point that that's a lie and tell the judge no that's a lie but i mean you know that's why they call them a judge they call themselves judge um and it's just not it's not appropriate for a person to be called a judge and to be judge when that person could have just rolled out of bed the wrong way, could have had an argument with one of their spouses or family members, or, you know, long story short, rolled out of bed the wrong way, having a bad hair day, and then pretty much take out their shit on you. So and there needs to be a better system. It's just, it's just fucked up. Make that very clear. It is ridiculous how none of these false allegations, you know, become real, legit charges so that you can go out and prosecute them based on these false allegations. They're all just false allegations. There's no fucking single goddamn legal legit charge. I had the same thing with my ex. She accused me for almost three years of being a rapist. But well, the, 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 you can take it to civil court, um, is what the police will tell you. A lot of other people will tell you. But they won't tell you that it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. I mean, if you take it to civil court, for example, for def- defamation or worse to that effect, um, it'll cost you an arm and a leg. And is it really worth, If I mean, if you're a multimillionaire, you're not going to care. You'll throw 20 grand, you'll, you'll throw 50, you'll throw 100 grand. But it's just a, it's a money-making system. And I've said it, you know, it's a cost-benefit analysis. Uh, type of machine so yeah would you really throw 20 grand to get it charged and uh, you know where's it really going to get you as well never had an official charge made against me because that would mean that I could actually go and sue her for slander sue her for false allegations so they never took it that far that's the diabolicalness of this family court and as well as just the police in general they know what to make an official charge, what not to make an official charge, and they will use everything against you, despite the fact that they have no evidence, nothing to back them up, and it's just one story of a female. And they even say to you, you know, uh, it's just uh, your word against her word. It's not even true. It's her word, and you have to defend your ass. It's actually her word, um, galvanized by the police, because the police know how to help word her statements as well, versus you, versus men. That's how it is. So, yeah, they they actually support, bend over backwards for females. It's not yours versus hers. That would be great. That would be 50-50. But that's not how it is, is it, brother? Anyways, Universal Studios 13, you have all my respect. I love you, brother. I don't, I don't want you to go through this. I don't think anybody in the world wants you to go through this. Hang in there. We know that this woman is completely insane. We want you to have your kids back. We care about you. This is War Dose Fire. See you all later. Have a good day. Bye. Thanks for that, um, War Drums Fire. really appreciate it. Um, well, I'm, I'm here. I'll, I'll be hanging in there. I just hope that all the other guys that are going through this shit as well hang in there as well and especially the guys that are just coming into or going through the the meat grinder especially the new guys because that's that's where it's at that's where it is the toughest the first few days the first few months false allegations as well I mean whether it be family court or not it's all tough and considering it is, it's heartbreaking, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not important. It's not important to the world. It's important for us men, but it's not important to the rest of the world. Turn on radio and you hear, you listen to all these love songs and the mind segmentation, the butterfly songs. If people really cared, you know, there would be making songs for men. Yeah, you won't only have uh, breast cancer day, you'll have, 
you know, help a men out day, suicide and stuff like that. But no, they don't care. I think the best way to cope and survive, for, you know, f- from my perspective, is just to go your own way. The best way. You might go through a phase of being very angry. It's understandable. Uh, but even that anger fades away and you move on you're happy not only happy but um, content I suppose I'm angry in a different way and it's a much more calibrated anger sharper wiser smarter and I will use that anger to inform other men boys children whether they be boys or girls that there's a machine and it wants you to be consumed that machine wants to consume you but specifically for the men males don't let that machine consume you and the best way to not let that machine consume you is to not participate walk away from that plantation Just walk away. Stop feeding it. Thank you, Wardrums Fire, and I'll talk to you soon, brother. Peace.